I'm Jasmine Keen with Parker Hannifin's Borland Division, and I'm going to show you how to install and set up your Kelvin 2 superheat controller. The controller is a standalone controller that operates refrigeration and air conditioning systems. The controller may be networked into a building automation system and offers communication protocols. It's available with or without display, but today I'm going to be showing you how to install the controller with display. So for that, all we need to do is mount your controller and your sensors, connect your sensor wires, select your settings, and then your system will be ready to go. This is our superheat controller. The item number is 952567. When you open it up, you'll find the quick reference guide to installation and setup of your Kelvin 2 controller. You're more than welcome to read through it. A lot of the information is the same that's in this video. On the back is the wiring diagram that I'll be referencing later in the video, so I would keep that close by. The controller itself will look like this. Under the yellow cap is the select knob. When connected to power, the display will flash and you can rotate and select different parameters using the select knob. The QR code in the lower left corner can be scanned and will give you bulletin 100-50-5.1. So if you look closely, you can see that I've highlighted the terminal labels to make it easier to see in the video. It's 1 through 18 on the bottom, 19 through 36 on the top and I'll be referencing those during the wiring portion of this video. On the back is your DIN rail. You pull this down and you can take it out. It should be attached to the wall like this. Then you can use the plastic hooks on the back of the controller to snap it against the rail. This is the Sporland Training Center and here we have the training station that I'll be using during the installation and wiring portion of this video. First, we're mounting the controller in a rain-tight protected location using the supplied DIN rail. Be sure to leave enough working space. We suggest the mounting area to be 10 inches high, 5 inches wide, and a minimum depth of 3 inches. Here's our electronic expansion valve that we're going to be attaching our cable to. First, take off the yellow cap, and then we can attach the cable. Make sure that you're turning the nut rather than turning the cable itself. Then we can take the black, white, green, and red wires and connect them to terminals 5, 6, 7, and 8 onto our controller box. Next is our pressure transducer. I'm using the 0 to 150 gauge. This is used with R22, 404, or any common refrigerant, but there are three other options. The 0 to 150 absolute for low pressures is typically used when operating around 0 PSI. The 0 to 300 is used with 410A, and the 0 to 500 is used with CO2. When you've correctly chosen your pressure transducer, you'll need to install it by brazing a quarter inch SAE access fitting to the suction line near the outlet of the evaporator. Mount it at 12 o'clock on a free draining horizontal line to decrease the possibility of oil trapping. This is our SAE fitting. We're going to attach the transducer to the top like this, then snap on our cable, and then we can connect the white, green, and black wires to terminals 33, 34, and 35. Next is a temperature sensor. I'm using the 3K surface sensor. This provides better resolution and it's more robust than the 2K sensors, but you could use either the 2K well sensor, item number 952795, or the 2K surface sensor, item number 952662. However, the 2K air sensor and the 98.6K surface sensor shown in this table cannot be used with this controller. So before mounting the temperature sensor, use Scotch-Brite to clean the copper line at the installation location and fasten the sensor at either 4 or 8 o'clock on a free draining horizontal line as shown in figure 8. The sensor should be installed 10 to 14 inches from the heat exchanger, minimizing the distance from the pressure transducer. Then we can connect the wires to terminals 31 and 32. The next connection is the optional room or box temperature sensor. Be sure to mount the sensor in the area you want to control. Install it at least 4 inches from the surface of the evaporator then connect the sensor wires to terminals 29 and 30. Terminals 27 and 28 will be connected to a digital input. A short or closed contact from an external relay will close the valve for pump down. Finally, connect the power wires to terminals 1 and 2. The transformer requirements are 24 volts AC, DC at 40 VA. Thank you for watching. Please watch the second video covering the setup of the system.